Hey y'all, it's Whitney Shattuck from the First Grade Roundup and I'm going to talk about my um, number talks. Um, maybe I am. There we go. My um, number talks um, companion pack that I have in my TPT store. Um, the link's in the description for you. And um, we're just going to kind of go over the um, procedures I use for this. So, let's get started. First of all, if you do not have the book Number Talks, this book right here, it is fantastic. It um, goes over everything that you need. It's a must-have um, for everybody to own if you are doing um, number talks. The screen that I usually have set up for the kids is this one right here. Um, it's the main menu and we're just going to talk about some um, technical things first and then we'll talk about my procedures for number talks and then I'm going to go over a dot image number talk today. I'll do some other videos with rec and recs and 10 frames and equations. I'll do one out of each category, but today we're just going to talk about um, dot images. So this is the main menu. Like I said, when we start number talks, this is where um, we start. This is the page that the kids see. So if I want to go to dot images like we're going to do today, then I'll just click on that um, screen and it will link me into all of the dot images. Once I get there, then you'll notice there's nine circles here. So in the book, Number Talks, there's nine lessons for the dot images in the Counting All and Odd section for first grade. And within those lessons, there are three, a series of three dot images, and that makes up a lesson. Yes, you can do it in order if you're OCD like that and you have to do it, but you can also do it out of order. A lot of times I just flip through the book and see which one I want to do, what fits with my goals for the week, and that's the one we do. I don't always go out of order, which I know my friends that teach with me are like, what in the world? I can't believe Whitney goes out of order. But I do people every now and then, whenever it's what the kids need. So, today we're just going to do lesson one just to go in order and um, be nice about things. So I just click on lesson one right here, and that gives me where I need to go. Now I don't want to do that until I'm actually ready to um, start my number talk with my kids. So I'm going to go down here, hopefully you can see that. Oh, you can't. That's interesting that that doesn't work. Maybe I should move me a little bit. There we go. Okay. Sorry about that, y'all. Um, so here we go. I'm going to go back to the main menu and get out of that. Okay. Um, so I'm going to go into my dot images, and then whenever I'm ready for the kids to see the um, image, then I will click on one. Okay. I wanted to talk about one other organizational thing that I use for this. Whenever I um, do number talks at the beginning of the year, I print off this page on my computer in black and white so I don't waste my color. And it's sort of my recording sheet so I know what I've done and what I haven't done. So I will um, just mark through with my pen over each of these numbers once I've done that lesson. That way if I'm going out of order I can kind of keep track of what I do because I will sort of jump all over this board all throughout the year doing doubles and making tens and landmarks. It just kind of depends on what my purpose is. Okay, So this is just sort of a great recording sheet for you too. Okay, one more thing before we get started. I always go over the procedures with the kids for number talks. I know everybody has um, sort of their preference for number talks and um, and how they set up things, so I'm just going to kind of go over what I do. That's why I have this lovely webcam here because y'all know how much I love my face on video. So, here we go. First of all, I like to do number talks on the carpet because everybody's close by. We can see, we can hear real well. I turn off half of my lights. I have that option in my room just because I think we can see better and it makes it something about turning off part of the lights it makes kids a little chiller and anything that can make my kiddos a little more chill is awesome for me. So, um, we come to the carpet, we sit, we do not shout out, that's the first rule. Um, for number talks because we don't want to run any our neighbors thinking if I shout out the answer then I've already stolen their thinking so I don't do that um, what I do is whenever I flash up the dots or the picture of the image the equation whatever I'm doing then they're thinking in their head what is the answer and I model through this with with the kids too with the sample one okay and I tell my kids as soon as you know the answer put your thumb on your chest see this is why I have the video you gotta do it right so you're going to put your thumb on your chest. And I say, but then you're not done. 
If you've gotten the answer, you're still actively thinking, well, is there another way I could have gotten the answer? How else could I get the answer? Because we want to push kids to be flexible in their thinking and to think of more than one way to solve a problem. Because let's face it, whenever we're adults and we have problems, I have my way, my husband has his way. There are multiple ways to solve the same problem, and then we have to have a discussion to figure out which solution is the best solution. So I feel like, in a way, I'm kind of preparing my first graders for marriage whenever we're talking about thinking of more than one way to answer the same question. So, thumb on your chest whenever you know the right answer, or the answer. Then once you have your answer, your goal is to start stretching your thinking and become a flexible thinker. And so then I'm going to show with my fingers how many ways I've come up with um, to get the same answer. So if I only have one way, my thumb is on my chest. If I am doing this right here, that means I have two ways to solve that problem. Three ways, I have four ways, I have five ways. And that way I can see if they're flexible thinkers. We do talk a lot at the beginning of the year about being honest with this, that this is for me to help them. And if they just go straight to this right off the bat, then I'm gonna think, nope, they're just pulling my leg. They don't really have five strategies right off the bat. I want it to be accurate so that I know how I can help them. Okay, and so then once I see that most everybody has their thumbs in the air, then I will say, who wants to start our thinking? And then they will raise their hand, or I might call on somebody to raise their hand. It just depends on what my purpose is. I may um, let them kind of raise their hand. I do that a lot whenever I start, just so that um, they feel comfortable and it's something they want to do. I'm not forcing somebody to do it at the beginning. Now, of course, we get to that in May. If you don't want to do it, I'm sorry. You've been here nine months. you got to buckle it up, and you got to do it. Um, but in August, the first week of school, when we're all shy, I just let them, um, I just kind of call on some volunteers until we've kind of got things under control. Once you know your kids really well and you've um, done some pre-assessments for math, then you're going to want to um, call on um, your kids purposefully. Even if they raise their hands, I'm purposefully choosing kids. Okay. Sometimes I even use my Class Dojo, if you guys use Class Dojo for behavior management, which is awesome by the way. There's a randomizer in there that you can randomly choose a kid. And um, sometimes I use that and then sometimes I use it and then actually pick the kid purposefully anyways and they think that I'm being random about it, which is totally awesome. But anyways, regardless, I'm going to pick purposeful kids. Okay. So um, let's just get started. Dot image. Um, here we go. Oh, the other thing that I need to tell you is that, well, we'll talk about that in a second. Okay. So let's go to lesson one. I'm going to put it up for three seconds, and then I'm going to click to go to the next slide, which will be blank after that. So here we go. One. And that's all the time that they get. I don't count out loud because I don't want to mess them up. Okay. And then once I get to this screen, they're telling me, um, what they know. They can tell me as the screen's going up too, but this this is my wait time screen. Okay, I'm giving them wait time, and then whenever I'm ready to talk about it, then I will say, how many dots did you see? Colton, how many dots did you see? And then he'll tell me, I saw five. Okay, Cooper, how many did you see? And then, um, so I'll say five, and then if there's anybody that agrees with him, they'll do this right here, which is me too. Okay, um, and then if somebody disagrees with them, then they'll continue to raise their hand. If somebody has anything different, raise your hand. Eight, and I just go ahead and record all of the answers that we get. And I'm getting these me too's the whole time. Nobody's saying, that was my answer, that was my answer. No, me too. Okay, because if we stop and yell out, then we're not going to have time to finish this in 10 minutes or less, which is totally my goal. Okay, so we're going to do those answers, and then we're going to do a little, I'll say, drum roll, please. And then we'll go back and say, oh, nine was the right answer. How many was it? And then they'll all count, yes, you know, yay, I got it, or whatever. So I'm going to say here again, I'm going to say, okay, so our answers were um, five, eight, and nine. And then a lot of times I'll say, okay, I'll just use my husband's name as an example. Justin, you said it was five. Do you still think it's five? And he'll say yes or no. Um, and sometimes they do say yes. Most of the time they say, oops, no, I was wrong. Okay. Cooper, you thought it was eight. Do you still think it's eight? No. Anybody else still think it's eight? No. And then we'll say nine. And whoever was that told me nine, then I'll have them um, explain their thinking. Or I may have somebody else explain their thinking. Now, this is what I'm thinking about in my head. 
I'm thinking that I want to try to go from the lowest level strategies and build from there. So that right off the bat, I'm not zooming over a kid's head and they have no clue what I'm talking about. So I'm going to call on one of my basic direct model, if you're a CGI trained person, babies that's going to count every single one of these dots. And I'm going to say, Cooper, how did you figure out it was nine? And he's going to say, well, I went one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And so I'm going to say, good job, you went one, two, and I'm going to record his counting. And while he's talking, I'm going to have some people that agree and some people that did the same thing that Cooper did. And so they're going to do this number to tell me me too. Okay? And then if somebody else um, showed me a different way, then um, they're going to raise their hand or I'm going to call on somebody else and say, Justin, how did you get um, that there was nine? And somebody's going to say, I saw five and I saw four. Oops, I'm getting ahead of myself. And I'm going to say, where did you see the five and the four? Can you come show me the five and four? And they're going to say, well, this is a group of five. That looks like a five on a dice. And this is a four. So I'm going to circle the group of five. And whoopsie, that was not good. And my group of four. I'm going to say, that's awesome. You saw five and four. So five and four make nine. How would I write that in the equation? Five plus four equals nine. You may notice how I'm kind of crazy and like to change colors every time we do a strategy and you'll see that in just a second because it can get a little crazy. Okay? And then I have, oh me too, me too. And I really try to encourage them, do not shout out, just show me. And then I reward them by saying, oh, I see Lillian, you said me too. You did that also and kind of acknowledge that so that they um, know that I do see them. Their voice is heard, they're just not loud and messing us up and distracting. Okay, and so then I have somebody else. How, else, how did you do it? Well, I saw four and one and four. And I'll say, you did what? I see the five and the four. You saw this four and then what did you see? Well, I saw four and one and four. Can you come show me that? Because I have no clue what you're talking about. And they'll show me. I saw four right here, and then one, and then four. And then I'll say, oh my goodness, you saw a row of four, and then a row of one, and then a row of four. That's awesome. I did not do anything like that. And then, of course, I'll have some people, me too, Let's be honest, they're going to say me too, even if they didn't do it because they think it's awesome. But it's okay. And then I'm going to say, so you're telling me that 9 can be 5 and 4, but it can also be 4 and 1 and 4? And, you know, then we're like, poof, 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 poof. mind blown, right? <laughs> so, um, I'm a dork, people just get used to it. So, then I write the number sentence for them. So, you saw 4 plus... 1 plus 4 equals 9. Okay? And then I'm going to have maybe a Captain Smarty Pants. So if they did this at the beginning of the year, I would be like, thank you, Jesus. Um, that might say, well, I kind of did the same thing with Shadding, but I did something else. Um, or in my classroom, they might do this little symbol right here, which is a connection. They have a connection. They did something similar to that. Some of my kids use that during number talks also. So I might have, um, you know, Smarty Pants Jacks that says, well, I did that too, but I did four and one, and I knew that made five. And then I just added one more or four more to make nine. And so I'll just say, oh, so you kind of did the same thing as a screen strategy, but you just kind of added as you went. You kind of grouped four and one together to make five. And then you added four to make nine. Or I can do my fancy arrow notation if we're ready for that. Um, you did four plus one, and that got you to five. And then you did plus four more, 
makes nine. So that's a little bit about my number talks. And check back in on my YouTube channel because I'll be doing some on the other kinds of number talks too. Thanks!